Let's haul some passengers and make some easy funds. We'll just take off here, being careful as we raise the nose. You know what, let's try that again. This is Echo 3, and let's continue our modded career mode discussion. Last time, we sent a probe off to Duna, but I unlocked one more piece of technology, and it's a new type of scan. This scan will help us find anomalies on the surface of Duna. So I'd like to throw another probe out there, and we're still in the transfer window, so now's still a good time to launch. I'm gonna make a small probe, try to make sure it's able to get there, but the last probe was able to have a relay dish on it, and I'm gonna put a couple on this one as well. So they'll both be in polar orbits, and ideally I will put them on opposite sides so I can have basically continuous coverage over Duna with these things. Maybe we'll send some rovers, or I'm not sure what we're gonna do in the future, but hopefully we will be prepared for whatever we decide to do going forward at Duna. And that's almost everything. Um, I'm not quite sure we have enough Delta V. We'll look at the figures here when we finish up the probe, throw it in a fairing, and we'll set the base here. We're not, this is a really tiny probe. It's not gonna take much of a rocket to get this thing, maybe a little more thrust to weight ratio here. That looks pretty good. Um, let's throw on a few wings, just to help keep it stable on ascent. The fairing's a little wide up top, and there we go. Let's look this over. This is going to be uh, our Duna new anomaly finder. I don't know, we'll, we'll call it something like DNA. That sounds kind of catchy, right, for a probe. Um, let's look over here. There we go, good name. And let's, you know, I we don't have enough Delta V. Let's add one more piece of, one more tank. That's enough fuel. All right, we're, we'll be fine now. Just didn't think we quite had enough. Put that back in the fairing and we will launch this up towards Duna. Let's go ahead, there we go. Now the other probe, it's already on its way to Duna. At the very end of the last video, we sent it. So same thing here, we're just gonna launch we're gonna circularize and then plot this thing out to Duna. It's, I really like this rocket. I think we will send another one of these to the MUN. Now it won't need quite as much Delta V, but I'd like to stand, scan for anomalies there as well. I happen to know that on the surface of Duna and the MUN are some really interesting things to find, some Easter eggs and this scanner will help us find those. Now we already found one quite a ways back at the North Pole on Kerbin, and it was this weird saucer looking thing. I don't know where it came from. We're gonna see if we can find other interesting artifacts around the Kerbal system here. And I'm thinking we might find some on Duna and on the Mun. Now we're just burning here straight out towards the month and we can get an encounter right away just from our ejection burn. Now I'm gonna set up a mid-course correction. Same with the other probe, we'll have these set up. So I wanna come in over the south pole. There we go. And I'll use Kerbal Alarm Clock then to help me keep track of when I need to make those corrections. Uh, really handy mod. This one, is basically the same probe, but I'm just gonna send it off to the MUN and we'll start scanning and see what it finds as well. I don't have contracts for these, so I'm not making any funds off of this, but I am anticipating future missions being built off of the work that these probes have already done. Now getting the MUN, pretty easy. I've done it quite a few times already in this series. No need to highlight everything that's going on. This has plenty of power, plenty of solar panels. It's in good shape for what we need it. Now we just need to set up our burn out to the MUN. If you've played this game at all much, you've probably been to the MUN already. I, I, yeah, I don't need to go in too much on all this, but I do really look forward to what these probes are going to find. Same thing with Duna, I'm gonna burn out towards the MUN and then make a mid-course correction and set us up to go onto a polar orbit We've already got several satellites out here already. We've been doing a lot of different scans, and this is using parts from the ScanSat mod, which there are also contracts that use the ScanSat mod 
for finding certain things, uh, making certain scans. And we've done visual scans, biome scans, uh, resource scans. So we've done quite a few different things here, but this new one will let us find anomalies. And here's kind of what one of the ScanSat maps looks like, and you can see all the different features that we can find on the surface. Now let's go make some money here. Let's pick up a few contracts. Ooh, this one looks kind of fun. It's the set. That's quite a few Kerbals. That's a pretty big passenger plane. So we were gonna we're gonna make a big passenger plane, and in this case we need to launch from the desert launch site and land at the island airfield. So it's a one-way trip. That's all we got to plan for. And let's make this quick. Let's see if we can make some kind of supersonic, massive transport plane here. We'll put on all kinds of passenger sections, and each one of those holds 16. So this is a pretty big plane. I'm throwing on the tourists here. It's a lot of tourists. Just making sure I've got enough room for everybody. And Kerbals now have weight, so I'm trying to just see how that affects everything here. Now, you've noticed I don't have any fuel or engines on this yet. That's all going to be out on the wing. By doing the engines and the fuel out on the wing, it will help me better keep the center of mass uh, from shifting because the bulk of the weight is going to be in the middle of the plane. Let's get creative with this. I'm going to do kind of a forward swept supersonic airplane thing. You know, probably haven't ever seen a passenger plane like this before. Uh, make sure we've just got lots of lift here in the center of the airplane. And then we'll have kind of a thin wing here out on the side. Right now our center of lift is pretty far back. Let's add a set of canards that will help with controlling pitch. It's a pretty long airplane and I'm going to need that front end to lift up a little bit for takeoff. And we've got some horizontal stabilizers. There we go. So we got a vertical stabilizer there on the back. Pretty big one that'll help us uh, with yaw control. Put on some rudders there. So we've got our elevators there in the back. And I try to make sure all of my control surfaces just have one function, whether it's roll, pitch, or yaw. Generally, that's what I try to do. What I've done here with the main wings is I've given them a little bit of dihedral angle. That means that they are both angled up from the fuselage a little bit. What that ends up doing is if the plane is rolls to the right or left just a little bit, then the side that is down a little lower will produce a little bit more lift and it will naturally want to stabilize. Throw a little a couple air brakes here on the back because this plane's going to be going really fast. My goal is to slow this thing down. Now I have a mod here for the fuel tanks and we'll use that to help keep, I'll just make them all liquid fuel and then we'll put on a couple Panther engines. This thing should go pretty fast. Throw on a couple air intakes in here. This is um, probably from Airplane Plus, the air intakes there. Panthers are still a really good engine. They're not modded here in any way. Throw on auto struts, I, especially with longer wings like this, I find auto strutting just kind of helps keep them stable. Everything is looking pretty good. Center mass isn't going to shift too much. Plane looks pretty stable. I'm just giving a little bit of angle here on those back wings. Just help the plane fly straight as we are in supersonic flight there. Um, I think contract says we have to have two pilots and an engineer. Make sure we've got all that set up. Um, putting a few struts on. Just the fuel tanks are attached directly to the fuselage, but just to help keep everything looking together like it should, I'm strutting that and it's quite a bit of weight, so I'm going to use two sets of the medium landing gear on the back, and I've got them perfectly in line with each other. Now making sure the front landing gear is also in line. I will sometimes shift landing gear around to make sure that the height is set correctly and they're even with each other, and they are. Now I will need to be careful with a tail strike. The Rear landing gear. Oh, no. If you saw what I did there, I tilted the aircraft trying to see how the aerodynamic pressure changed as the angle of attack changed with the airplane. That was just a, a quick look over things, but it looks like the plane remains stable even in higher angles of attack, so we're in pretty good shape. Throw my name on there as well. And 
we're ready to go. Let's take off. We're gonna head over to the island airfield. Now I have a mod here for atmospheric autopilot. If you've seen any of my other videos, I've been using it. I really like this, especially for longer flights. I can just set the autopilot and let it go. Now we are trying to accelerate and I'm not accelerating too quickly, but we'll throw on the afterburners here. And the afterburners normally aren't that efficient in some sense, but once we get up, say around 15 kilometers in altitude, although we're going through fuel pretty quickly, if you look at how fast we are going or how much distance is covered per second, not just how much fuel we're using per second, it's, it's really not that bad as far as efficiency. And we are, <laughs> we're going pretty fast here. Uh, really makes the trip go pretty quickly. I do have to watch it with this autopilot mod. If I accidentally type in something wrong, um, then I uh, cause the plane to go crazy. So I have to click off of the autopilot. It, it's just a little different. I have used Mech, MechJeb's autopilot before. Um, I like its atmospheric um, autopilot as well, but I'm, I'm not using that for this career game at all. So we'll just use this one. Really handy and nice for longer flights because then I can go and do other things. Coming in for landing, really try to line up with the runway several kilometers out so you don't have to do a lot of turning. And then I need a slowdown, which I've got the air brakes going. I've got my flaps deployed. And the, this runway is not very long. Now I'm deploy the brakes there, slow down, and we have slowed down. Watch your vertical speed definitely when you are doing landings. You want that pretty slow. All right, recovered all those guys. We're there we go. That was a pretty good mission. Made some decent funds off of that. Now, what should we do next? I am thinking we need to pick up some contracts. What do we've got available? Here's some interesting stuff. This is all involving Min Minmus. We're going to gather some science there. So let's pick up. Oh, we can several contracts here for Minmus. Anything else? Um, there we go. And yeah, we'll plant a flag at Minmus. And you know what? Let's. I think there's one here for tourism as well. And it's just a flyby. But if we land and do the science, that will count as having done a flyby as well. So we can pick that one up. That's quite a few contracts here, all just for the same location. So now we just need to build a craft that can do all of that. But I would like to pick up a couple technologies. This pod here can hold three Kerbals in it. And we've got three tourists, so it'll make it easy. And I'll just pick up this one as well. That, that should be pretty good. I'm going to use that new pod here for our new craft. I'm gonna try something new with these three Kerbal pods. I'm gonna stack them on top of each other. Now let's throw on a battery and a reaction wheel because they don't have any reaction wheels. We'll throw the cone on and use it as an attachment point for a couple parachutes. That should be fine. This should land on Kerbin, all right. Make sure I've got the Kerbals I want and the inventory I want there. Now we need all the science experiments here. We need the Mystery Goo, we need the Science Junior, we need the barometer and the thermometer. Now we need to make sure we have enough fuel. In this case, I need to make sure I have enough fuel to land and return to Kerbin, which with Minmus does not take very much. And the low gravity means we can even use the spark engine. To balance the center of mass, we put the solar panels offset from the rest of the craft there. So with the weight of the mystery goo, we now have uh, inline center of mass with the center of thrust and it'll stay in line the whole time. A few struts here just to keep things stable during launch. Make sure we have eh, just a little bit of landing ease. We can use the small ones, not much gravity on Minmus anyway. Throw this all on a fairing. Those pods are not very aerodynamic. Now this stage is just really to get us to finish our circularization, which is maybe a couple hundred meters per second to finish that and transfer over to Minmus and maybe maybe we'll even slow down get into orbit with Minmus with this looks like we are in pretty good shape for that I'm just throwing a little extra fuel these tanks look kind of cool for that so that's what my 
second stage there, and then we're going to make the booster or our launch stage here, throwing a big engine, which is a lot more thrust than we really need, but the skipper engine isn't quite enough, so I erred on the side of too much, which is like 1.8 thrust to weight ratio on launch, which is a lot higher than I normally like, but you know, obviously it'll suffice. I should try to make a fairly aggressive gravity turn with that much thrust to weight ratio. Oh, this is just to investigate Minmus here, so maybe a catchy name, make it mine, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and to throw my name on here just because I like to do that. I've messed with the custom flags. I have I have fun with that. I have a few others. In this particular game, I'm just using my Echo 3 flag. That's, you know, Valentina hasn't landed on Minmus yet, so we'll put her on this and we'll level up those Kerbals and get the payment for the tourist. Now I'm trying to do an aggressive gravity turn. It's, it's kind of hard with actually this high a thrust to weight ratio to get the craft to turn over as quickly as I'd like. But we, we're getting it over just fine. This craft is, it is overbuilt for a Minmus mission. But what I'd like to do then, because we are overbuilt, we can land on at least one other biome. We need to land on the poles and get the science from there. But there's some other biomes close to the poles and we can land on at least one other. Now let's transfer out to Mimis here. I just need to get those closest approach markers, you know, close. I don't have to actually get an encounter right away. We'll just correct midway there and just get our encounter with Minmus. So we'll just burn out to about the same altitude that Minmus is. The burn counter and the the readout for the Delta V for the in-game, I don't know, it's not liking this engine or this setup and for some reason, but the Kerbal Engineer one seems to be working just fine. So if you're looking at those numbers on the left, like that doesn't look correct, and, and they aren't, but fortunately the ones at the top of the screen are. I, I do really like Kerbal Engineer redo. So if you have access to mods, that is, I mean, one I would probably almost always have in a game. We go, we have this EVA experiment kit, and I've been doing that, and I'll try to do that in the different situations as well. Plus we needed to get the science from high space here in Minmus. We need to get the science junior and the mystery goo, so we've got that done. We'll get the EVA science here. Not that we have a contract for that, but we'll try to get a lot of science from this. Hopefully, you know, we'll get over a thousand science points from this mission, probably get more than that with all the different situations we're gonna be able to do. Now, I don't have much more uh, as far as EVA reports to do. I think just over the poles, I got most of the other ones already on a previous trip to Minmus, but we'll try to get as much new science as we can. And we're coming up right over the pole, and I'm just going to pretty much kill all of our velocity and just drop straight down here on the poles. Our orbital velocity is pretty low. I know it's not the most efficient means of landing, but it's Minmus, so yeah, I can save a couple hundred meters per second being more efficient, but we've got plenty. But the craft is kind of top heavy, and these solar panels don't retract, so I'm gonna try and be really careful as I descend. This, this is not ideal. This is too much of a slope. I should have been a little bit more careful picking up my landing site. If I look on the top of this ridge, it looks kind of flat up there, so let's burn up there. Rather than risk, you know, damaging something on the craft, we'll just land up here. We'll be all right this way. Yeah, that's, that's pretty flat. Minmus obviously has the flats, and those are great places to land, but our contract's for the poles, so I have to land here, and this, this is a good enough spot. So we need to plant a flag, and we'll get some funds for that. I'll have Dan and Tina get out, plant the flag, and that's really... All we need to do there. We'll have the science get scientists get out and gather, um, you know, all the science from this. We'll get crew reports, EVA reports. We'll get surface samples. We'll get this EVA kit. Obviously, the mystery goo, the science junior, the barometer, thermometer, and we'll just head out this way. Go up. We're pretty close to another biome. I'm using the Kerbal Engineer readout up there, see what biome I'm predicted to land in, see what we hit here. It looks like we got the Highlands, 
So that'll work. We haven't landed in the Highlands before, so let's land here. This spot looks pretty flat. That'll work for me. There we go, easy touchdown. I've got the Delta V to spare, so I'll just make sure I do a good job on this thing. Unlike my last attempt, I bounced it around there on the surface. There we go, gather all the science again. I, I don't know, Minimus is one of my favorite places to visit. It's just so easy, it, I like the low gravity, but I guess it's got enough gravity. If you've ever been to Gilly, it, it just, it's almost a pain at how low the gravity is. I mean, just jumping or uh, running, you know, if you're running a rover or something on there and you hit, hit a little too much, you're almost gonna go eject and uh, get into EVE orbit if you just ramp something funny. So Gilly is almost too low gravity to be fun. There we go. And now I'm not in an equatorial orbit, but I'm still trying to eject Minmus retrograde to its orbit, which I can do just fine in this orbit. I had a, I had a weird glitch here with the graphics. I, I don't really know. They'll appear back up again. That's why Kerbin didn't have clouds there for a sec. Here we go. And we'll just land. Uh, I think we're gonna land in the highlands probably of Kerbin up in this region here, which we haven't landed there before. So we can gather a little bit more science on landing. So I didn't have a blader on the top pod and I think it it blackened from some of the effects there. Last time I tried landing, I had a weird thing. I did this once and I redo it. The Kraken kind of got a hold of my craft and pulled off the parachutes. And so fortunately I quick saved and I think that was part of the graphics part. Hey, we got a lot of science. I look forward to spending this on our next video. I am Echo3 and I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like this video and subscribe.